Everybody, it's Tyler here at the championship, checking in team number 2910, Jack and Nevada. This is your PNW DCMP winners and a team that for years now has become the powerhouse uh, in first, known for their incredible swerves, compact robots, and just incredible shooting as well too. To help me speak more about this robot, by the way, I have Aaron, William, and Darlena. And of course, we'll follow that cargo path through, but we gotta talk about their incredible swerve modules that they have, that they're using, climber sequence, all this coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it is not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. So Aaron, let's start out with uh, the SWIR modules on here. I think one of the things 2910 has really been known for is uh, debuting new awesome SWIR modules. So tell us more about what you have and how it's been working out for you. All right, so these SWIR modules are more or less the same. They're the same gearing as the Mark IV-I, but the clear difference here is that the motors are flipped, so now they're on the bottom, or like more hanging down. And um, they actually build into the frame now, which is very useful for having a really low CG. Um, so one motor will do the, uh, the rotation of the module through this, kind of going down through to the spout. And then there is another motor that runs the rotation, or sorry, the drive. And um, yeah, it's pretty much the same as the Mark IVs, which we used on our um, previous robot. And they've been working out great. I mean, like I said, 2910 has really been known for just zipping around the field with ease and just making it look so clean as well, too. So uh, let's keep moving on uh, from your robot as well, too. We're going to talk more about uh, ball path uh, on here. So William's going to talk a little bit more about that. Let's start out with your intake. Love to hear about uh, what you have. Did you make any changes? I know there's some similarities to last year as well, too. So talk to me about how that translated into this year. So when we were designing our intake, we kind of knew that we wanted to, we knew that we wanted to do kind of a mechanism style intake sure. fairly early on. I mean, we did some prototype type testing with like compliant wheels to see like maybe those would work better, but mechanism um, has proved to be fairly effective. Uh, four inch uh, mechanisms were more effective than our single print two inch mechanisms that we had previously used. So uh, we ultimately decided to go with those instead of like the previous ones. However, a lot of systems are otherwise similar. Obviously, the new, uh, it's powered by Falcons and uh, th 3D printed uh, pulleys again, much like last year. Uh, the pneumatics are actually the same though. Sure. So like, you'll see a lot of similarities there architecturally just across the whole robot. Um, let's keep going on. We'll talk about your indexer into your shooter. Talk to me a little bit more about uh, the composition of it. Uh, your flywheel here, really uh, beefy, uh, big at flywheel. So I'd love to hear just more about it. Okay, so like going up into the robot, we've got, so it's actually distinction from our previous robot. We're powering only on the top. So the robot's kind of, it's running across the battery there just to kind of save that little bit of extra space where sure. the battery would otherwise have to go. And then, so as you're going up, you've got more of those 3D printed pulleys and it's kind of actually more space savings while we're at it. Uh, though the motor driving that uh, feeding system's all the way at the back. Uh, so we've got long belts kind of running there because the back's basically just, that's where we actually had space to put the motor compactly. And so you kind of, and so as you're going up, you go up into the shooter, right? And so we actually, it's very similar to our 2021 and 2020 shooters. Uh, testing showed that we didn't really need many changes aside yeah. from obviously scale. So we did some testing with compression to determine that, well, roughly one inch at the shooter is about what worked for us. And so we run up along the standoffs uh, onto the hood and we actually tested without the beefy flywheels to see maybe that would work better, but that showed that we needed the inertia in order to be able to shoot twice in a row just because of how big the arc it's moving along is. I mean, because that's like up to, that's in excess of 90 degrees even. 
And so when you're moving along that much path, you're taking some serious energy from the flywheel. Yeah. And so we needed that mass in order to keep being able to shoot two in a row. And you do it so quick as you go yeah. through everyone's cycle wise. I know we'll talk a little bit about some of the programming a little bit later on, but let's bring uh, Aaron back on and talk about uh, the mechanics of your climber uh, that you have in here. So talk to me a little about the packaging for it. Uh, and then I know uh, Darlene is going to talk about more of the climber sequence as well. Um, yeah, so this is actually very inspired by uh, Baby Grand in 2021 as it's, uh, it's a telescope climber, very similar to that um, robot. However, we ha learned a few things from it. Um, so now we have two gearboxes outside of the telescopes rather than inside to um, actually just help with um, easy disassembly and assembly if something breaks. But we learned that that was probably not the greatest decision at Sundome, where um, every time we would traverse, the climber would dent and we would have to disassemble and undent it after every, um, after every match. Okay. Um, so we, re we redesigned them and made them out of a more thick uh, stock of aluminum tubing. Yeah, so they're definitely pretty heavy when I, when I picked that up there, for yeah. sure, so. And kind of the other part that changed was um, how high up we needed to make these pieces right here, which just kind of hold down the, um, hold down the climber from back driving when the robot's off, and I've actually got a piece right here. Sure. Um, so this is a bit smaller than uh, the ones down there. And, um, Sorry. Um, so as for the hood, this was actually five-day print, and it had to be done in two pieces. Oh, wow. It was actually done on that Mark IV right there. Um, it's, it's made out of onyx, and it, it's worked pretty well, actually. We've never had to use that backup one. Yeah, it definitely looks very well constructed, well built. Let's talk about climber sequence, bringing Darlena uh, to talk about that more. And uh, I know you're going to narrate a little bit about what's going on. And anything else from a programming standpoint you want to cover, too? Yeah, so for our climber, we knew from the very beginning we wanted it to be automated so that we could mitigate human error and also uh, keep one driver, to keep it less complicated uh, while we're driving. Um, so we've had a climb sequence, an automated climb sequence since week one. Um, and it's been super easy to also continue to uh, speed up. We currently have a seven second climb. Um, so we want the automated climb makes it easy to do that because we're not relying on somebody to learn how to do it quickly. It, we're, um, we're just testing different numbers in the climb to make it faster. Um, and that makes it really nice. Yeah, let's go ahead and show it off and then just let us know kind of what each stage is as it's happening. Yeah, so this stage is it goes up um, above the mid bar and then once I press this again, it goes down so we can check to make sure we're actually on the mid bar. Um, just to make sure that we're not hooking only one uh, hook on there and, um, and th that would break the climber. Um, and then I just press a single button and then it does the entire climb sequence by itself. Yeah, and all about seven seconds set as well, too, so yeah. that's super cool. Uh, you know, 2910, the complete package here, uh, of course, and one of the best teams uh, in uh, FRC as well. So we really appreciate you taking time to tell us about your robot. Uh, wish you best of luck here at the competition, and uh, what an incredible machine. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in robotics scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first chose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.